ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Mm Mmm, you're going to love the big exciting news today. Now there are two brand new Betty Crocker cake mixes. There's chocolate malt and peanut delight. I'll bet you can hardly wait to try them, and I wouldn't blame you. They're just so good. Today, let me tell you about the chocolate malt. It's a wonderful new way to enjoy an old flavor that's a favorite with so many of us. There's honest-to-goodness delicious malted milk right in the mix. And, of course, there are all the other fine-quality ingredients you choose yourself, like famous soft-to-silk cake flour and pure vegetable shortening. And because it is a Betty Crocker cake mix, Mom knows it's the easiest way ever to bake a perfect cake. So next time Mom goes shopping, be sure to remind her to get that brand new delicious treat, Betty Crocker's Chocolate Malt Cake Mix. You'll love it. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto... The daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. Are you still there? Dan Reed, teenage nephew of the Lone Ranger, left the general store in Hayville early one morning with supplies and walked toward the hitch rack. Suddenly, he was startled by shouts and gunshots. Dan instinctively took cover behind a nearby watering trough as several masked men ran to their horses. As Dan crouched to avoid being hit, he saw a bullet crease the leather heel of one of the outlaw's boots just before the man mounted. A moment later, the crooks raced from town. You all right, son? Yes, sir. Well, you're lucky. You're almost in the line of fire. The fact is, they think I could have winged one of them, but I'd been afraid of hitting you. Yeah, I counted six of them. Yeah, and they sure move fast. All you boys who are willing to ride in the posse, get your horses and we'll trail them. Right. I'll go get my deputy. I'll, I'll go tell the Lone Ranger in tunnel. Easy, boy, steady, fella. Come on, Victor. When Dan arrived at camp, he told the Lone Ranger and Tonto about the robbery. Dan also mentioned the bullet mark on one of the outlaw's boot heels. Then the Lone Ranger and Tonto left to find the outlaw's trail. Meantime, after leaving town, the members of the gang separated, and each covered his trail carefully. Around noon, they arrived one by one at a small farmhouse a few miles from town. A small, wiry Mexican woman hovered about the table where they gathered to eat. Oh, at last you have all come back. Ah, oh, that is good. Yeah. We're all here, Maria. Yeah, yeah. A bullet nicked my boot heel just as I was mounting. My foot was numb for quite a while after. Ah, you're lucky it didn't get you in the foot, Vegas. Yeah. See, you are all in such a risky business. My poor Carlos was killed trying to escape from the law. Ever since I have been glad to help his friends, senors. But you must be careful so the law does not follow you here. Ah, don't worry. The men are all mighty good at covering their trails, Maria. We'll pay you well for putting up with us for a few days. Oh, bueno. But tomorrow I must go for more food. I will need money for that. Ah, you'll have plenty. Don't worry. I gotta go get my horse shot, Bucky. The shoes are getting worn, so as they leave unusual marks. Now, wait till tomorrow morning, Pecos. Then it'll be safe enough to ride to the blacksmith. Yeah. We'll lay low here today till the posse gets tired of hunting for us. Bucky Hooker was right when he said his men were clever at covering their tracks. The sheriff and his posse lost the trail, and the Lone Ranger and Tonto were unable to make any headway in their efforts to follow the outlaws. Oh, no, 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 no
Although there's no use wasting more time, the only tracks we've been able to find all day have been those left for the posse. That's right. We'll get Dan and return to camp for the night. Tomorrow we'll search the territory for a possible hideout. Oh, hello there. Come on. Come on. Early the next morning, before starting out to search for the outlaw's hideout, Tonto went to the blacksmith's on the edge of town to buy horseshoe nails. When he arrived, the blacksmith was just finishing with Pecos's horse. Oh, scum. Oh, fine. Tonto entered the shop and stood waiting. There, there you are, Mr. Old. Oh, good. Oh, here. Here's the money. Yeah, thank you. That's just right. Come back again. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Come along here. Come on, boy. Tonto glanced after Pecos as the crook led his horse out into the sunlight. As Pecos lifted his left foot to the stirrup, balancing a moment on his right, the Indian's eyes caught sight of a deep, newly made groove on the inside of the man's right boot heel. Well, what do you want, Injun? Bring your horse inside. Uh, me you be back, maybe. Hey, wait a minute. You need work done. I'm not busy. Uh, me in hurry. Get out, easy fella. Get him off scout. After a two-hour wait, the Lone Ranger became impatient and sent Dan to town to find Tonto. Meanwhile, Tonto, suspicious of a bullet groove in Pecos's right boot heel, had followed the crook to the small farmhouse. Oh, scout, old fella. He watched as Pecos rode out of sight around the house. Hey, scout, easy, fella. Then, leaving Scout among the trees nearby, Tonto cautiously made his way through the brush-grown backyard and crouched beneath a window to look inside. Then... Reach, Indian. Huh? Don't turn around. Uh. Lucky you tipped me off that this agent was trailing me, Jake. Get his guns, Pecos, and be careful. Right. Yeah, I got him. All right, now turn around, Redskin. Uh-huh. Hey, Jake, this is the same Redskin I saw at the blacksmith shop. Huh? We'll take him inside and find out why he trailed me. Get moving, Injun. Uh, you... Hey, Bucky, look what we found snooping outside. Redskin, huh? What are you doing here? I can tell you that, Bucky. I saw him at the blacksmith shop. He trailed me here. Why did you trail him, Indian? Speak up. Oh, what? Hey. Holy smoke, what's that mean? Means he can't speak English, I reckon. Take him out to the barn and tie him up. Maria understands some of the Indian lingo. When she comes back from town, maybe she'll get him to talk. One way or another, he's going to be mighty sorry he followed Pickles. Dan Reed entered town from the north. He looked for Tonto's horse along the street, but not seeing Scout, the youth rode to the blacksmith shop at the south edge of Hayville. Who? 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 Steady boy. He learned from the blacksmith that an Indian of Tonto's description had been there, but had suddenly left to follow another man on the south trail. Dan left the shop and stood a moment thinking. The Lone Ranger's camp was a few miles north. Tonto had gone south. He quickly decided to follow Tonto and find him. Easy, boy. Come on, Victor. Dan had gone about a mile on the south trail when he saw a buggy ahead of him. As Dan approached the buggy from the rear, the horse hitched to the vehicle suddenly snorted and began to buck and sidestep. A moment later, the buggy tipped dangerously, throwing its occupant out on the trail. Come on, Victor! Dan quickly rode alongside and grabbed the horse's bridle. Hold, hold, hold there! Hold, hold! Hold it, hold it, hold it. Are you hurt, man? The horse is quiet now. My wrist is hurt. Let me help you out. Gracias. But for you, I might have been trampled by the horse or run over by the buggy. Something frightened the horse. Uh, I'm sure he'll be all right now. I'll help you into the buggy. Oh, gracias. There you are, ma'am. Oh, my wrist. I, I cannot drive now. I'll tie my horse behind the buggy and I'll drive you home. When they reached the entrance to the farm, Maria asked Dan to stop. Ho, ho, ho there, ho. I will manage from here. Oh, what is your name? Dan Reed, ma'am. I am grateful to you for driving me home. Gracias. Now you must leave. Yes, sir. Goodbye. Dan quickly untied Victor from the buggy and watched as Maria drove toward the farmhouse. Get up. 
As Dan stood watching, a man led a paint horse from a grove of trees and crossed the barnyard. Victor, that scout, you recognize him too. Tano's at that farmhouse and there's something wrong. I'm going to see what it's all about right now. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Cause champions are made, not pork. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. It's encouraging for all of us to know that champions are made, not born. We can get ahead like Ted Klazuski, power hitter for the Cincinnati Redlegs. Here's the story of little Ted and how he worked to get ahead by playing ball each chance he got and doing what the champs all taught. A bowl of Wheaties helped a lot. Now Ted slams them off the wall, still likes Wheaties best of all. Why, Big Ted Klazuski was raised on Wheaties, and you bet he still eats them. Ted knows there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Come on, Ted, break up the game! Hey, hey, hey! He's on his way, on his way, he's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way, get on your way, get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. to continue. In case anyone might be watching, Dan mounted Victor and rode a short distance back along the trail. Then he turned in among the trees and stopped. Oh, oh, Victor, oh, steady. I'll hide you here, Victor. Then I'll go on foot to the farmhouse. Hidden by the trees, Dan circled the house and came up through the brush behind the barn. Though at times he was allowed to carry a gun, Dan was now unarmed and moved with great caution. When he reached the back of the barn, Dan looked through a crack to see if Scout was stabled inside. Instead, he saw something that caused him to tense. Tonto was inside on the barn floor, tied hand and foot. Tonto? And he's a prisoner. I have to get inside without being seen. Crouching low, Dan slowly made his way around to the barn door. No one was in sight, so he quickly stood up, opened the door, and entered. Tonto! And there's Scout! Dan! It not cook you here! Hooker gang in farmhouse. Golly, I'll untie you, then we'll get out of here. Mason, don't move. I got you covered. Uh, All right. A short time after Dan was captured and tied in the barn with Toto, a thunderstorm accompanied by heavy rains hit the territory. At the camp, the Lone Ranger waited until the storm subsided. Finally, he became concerned when neither Dan nor Toto returned. So he mounted his white stallion silver and headed toward town. Oh, silver! The heavy rains had eliminated all tracks, so the masked man decided to question the blacksmith. He circled the town and soon drew rain in front of the blacksmith shop. Did it be close? Hmm, seems to be closed. There's a printed sign tacked to the door. Gone away for the afternoon, be back in the morning. For a moment, the Lone Ranger stood thinking. There was no way for him to find out if Tonto and Dan had stopped at the shop, nor could he pick up their trails because of the rainstorm. He was sure they wouldn't be in town since they knew he was waiting for them. Silver, I'm sure Tonto and Dan ran into trouble. We must find them quickly. The question is, how... After another moment of thought, the Lone Ranger decided to make inquiries in town. He led Silver into a grove behind the blacksmith shop. Then he took time to disguise his features so that he could go without his mask for the time being. When he was satisfied with the result, he mounted Silver and started uptown. After leaving Silver at the hitch rack in front of the cafe, the Lone Ranger made inquiries concerning an Indian on a paint horse and a youth riding a white horse. Finally, he learned both had been seen riding southward through town, but hadn't been seen returning. The masked man decided to search for them south of town. (laughs) 
Sometime after the storm, Maria, Bucky, and the men entered the barn where Toto and Dan were tied. Well, there they are, trussed up like chickens. Wait! That young man, how did he get here? Jake and I caught him about to free the engine. They're friends. Hey, you act like you know him, Maria. No, 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 I do not. Dan glanced quickly at the Mexican woman who stood slightly behind the men. She placed her finger across her lips, indicating that Dan was not to recognize her. Dan said nothing. Then Bucky spoke to Toto. Well, Indian, you were heard talking to this youngster here. So you can speak English. Now maybe you'll do some talking. Me not talk. Maybe a little gun weapon will loosen his tongue. Nah, Indians are stubborn. But we might get the young fella to talk if we knock him around a little. No, you wait. You not hurt him. <laughs> so you don't want him to get hurt, huh? Well, that gives me an idea. Lift the boy up and tie him to that post over there. Tie him so he's facing the post. Yeah, right. Quickly and roughly, two of the men lifted Dan and tied him with his face to the post Bucky indicated. Then Bucky took a heavy whip from its place on the wall of the barn and handed it to Pecos. Here, Pecos. I have some questions to ask the Indian. Anytime he doesn't answer, use the whip on the young fellow's back. Sure. Go ahead with the question. Wait, senor. I, I do not care to watch. I will go outside. Go ahead, Maria, if you feel squeamish. Maria stepped outside and stood to one side of the doorway, listening. She felt obligated to Dan Reed because of his kindness to her earlier that day, but knew she dared not interfere directly. She could hear Bucky inside asking Toto questions. Now speak up, Indian, or your young friend gets the whip. Do you know who I am? Uh -huh. I thought so. I've seen you someplace before, but I can't place you. You've seen me before, haven't you? Uh -huh. Well, speak up. When and where? Here go at Laredo. When you and gang rob express office, you and gang get away. One fella get caught. Him named Carlos. Oh. Later, you help him escape and then shoot him. Caramba! He ride with posse to find you and gang. So Bucky shoot my Carlos. He said the law was to blame. Caramba, I shall see that they pay for it. While Bucky was questioning Toto in the barn, the Lone Ranger rode along the trail nearby. As he passed a thick grove, not far from the farmhouse, he and Silver heard a familiar sound. Easy, boy, easy. The great horse Silver immediately recognized the whinny of his offspring, Victor. That whinny came from that grove there. Come on, Silver. A moment later, the Lone Ranger stopped beside Victor. Oh, Silver, oh, easy. Silver, while I look around. Meantime, Maria, angered by what she had learned and determined to revenge her husband's death, hurriedly entered a small hay barn where the gang kept their riding gear. They must not escape. I shall get help quickly. Taking a can of coal oil, she spread the oil over the floor. Then, stepping outside the door, she lit matches and threw them inside. The oil quickly caught fire, and as the flames spread, she ran back to tell the men. One more question, Indian. How did you Help, know about... quick! Come quick, all of you! The hay barn, it is on fire! Come on, we gotta put that... All right, hurry on there. So, they are gone. Now I will release you. There. Now the Indian... A moment later, both Dan and Toto were free. Then Maria reached into the folds of her voluminous skirt. See, I have found your guns inside, Indian. Here, I give them back to you. Mm, that's good. Thanks a lot, but you'll get in trouble. Oh, no. The hay barn, it will soon be blazing high. People will come. We must keep the gang here to be captured. Why you do this? The boy, he was kind to me. Also, they murdered my husband, Carlos. Oh. Quick now, get the horses out and chase them away. Soon the men will come back for them for to get away. Hurriedly, Dan, Toto, and Maria led the horses outside and sent them running back among the trees. The flames were already leaping high in spite of the gang's efforts to put the fire out. Toto, Dan, and the woman hid in the shadows outside as Bucky and his men entered the big barn. Hurry up, all of you. We gotta get away from here before people begin to gather. Gotta stop the smoke and the fire for miles. Hey, the horses are gone. Let's look outside. Redskin and the boy are gone, too. You wait. Huh? You covered. Hey. You not come out. You reach. Use your guns, man. Get that redskin away from the door. Hold it. Hey, look up in the loft. 
Stop the mask, man! The Lone Ranger, now wearing his mask, had arrived in time to take in the situation. He had climbed a rope used for hauling hay through an opening in the back of the barn. Now he stood with drawn guns in the loft above the outlaws. You're all trapped between my Indian friend and me. Drop your guns. In the barn, Sheriff, the hooker gang. Around the barn, man. I won't be taken. I'll get that engine. You drop guns. No. My men have the place surrounded. Drop your guns or so help me, we'll plug all of you. Realizing they were hopelessly trapped, the outlaws dropped their guns and raised their hands. Then the sheriff's men took them outside and handcuffed them. You up in the loft. Drop your guns and come down here. Oh, he is not one of them, Sheriff. He helped trap them, he and the Indians. That's right. Him, Lone Ranger. Why, Jiminy, the Lone Ranger, huh? Where are you? I want to ask you a few questions. See? How did that gang get here? What are they doing at your place? Briefly, Maria told everything. When she finished, the sheriff said, Well, you'll go on trial for harboring criminals, Maria. Maybe because of what you did, the court will go easy with you. I am glad they are captured, Sheriff. I do not care about myself. And now, just to be sure, I want to ask the mask man a few questions to see what was going... Hey, where did he and the Indian go? Outside, Sheriff. <laughs> He's the man he said he is, all right. I reckon the minute I laid eyes on him, I knew he was the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to The Lone Ranger, brought to you